you from Everspace 1, making those implementations in Everspace 2. So it's, it's a real fun time. I know you guys are throwing a lot at me in the chat. Uh, I'm going to cover just a little bit more gameplay, and then I'm going to dive in with you guys, see what you're talking about, answering your questions. This is just a fun time. Oh my gosh. All right, so we also have, because each one of these areas, this is like a, this is just one point on the map. Each one of these locations is handcrafted. We can do this now because uh, technology and resources, basically. And because each one of these locations, there are about 10 locations in each one of these solar systems, uh, we'll have about 80 unique handcrafted locations for you to go out and venture into. This is for all of your main campaign missions, all of your side missions, all of the jobs that you're taking on, your explorative needs galore. Uh, we are having a lot of fun. And this also includes locations that are at planets where you can fly down in Atmo, explore the world, um, venture to stations, fly into caves, other types of structures, stuff like that. All of this is, is in the works as I am speaking to you. Actually, no, that's technically not true. The team is actually out of the office now. It's their weekend, but uh, I digress. The point is, is that this these are things in the works, stuff that we are working on and uh, we'll be presenting when the time is right. So a lot of exciting, fun things. And because there's so much in this world, I mean, we have to be invited to try new things and do odd jobs and stuff. So we have this shadow creature that when you grab, he just wants to stay in the shadows. If we go too high, we put him in the sunlight, he turns white. He doesn't like that very much. So what we are tasked with is staying in the shadows and getting over to the other shadow creature. So this challenge in this particular area is very, very simple, pretty straightforward. A lot of the shadows just covered by that massive asteroid. We bring him to the other one and kaboom, we get some dark matter. Great. Maybe that'll be something we can use for crafting later. Or it could be a hot commodity to sell at a specific station that we find. Or it could just be junk that we don't want and we could just eject it from our ship. I'm not going to do that. Obviously there's a profit in it somewhere. So that's perfect. So let's go ahead and uh, answer some questions before we venture into the open world aspects of Everspace 2. So let's see what people are talking about. I already see uh, individuals asking about a Switch version. Um, I will tell you straightforward that currently the projection of Everspace 2 is not going to be uh, able to fit on nor run at an applicable level that we desire on the Nintendo Switch. There are possible ways to still bring it to a Nintendo console, but that's kind of on Nintendo. And if they come out with another console in the next couple of years, of course. But otherwise, we are planning on being on Xbox and on PlayStation, of course, for PC, Mac, and Linux as well. For those of you who are not in the know, the release date of this full game is in 2021. What you see here on screen is a prototype that is less than 5%. It is a mere sliver of what we will offer in the full game. Mm. Howdy. Oh, is it up on YouTube? Are we working on YouTube? Hang on a second. I need to check and make sure that everything's going good. It looks like it is. I think Michael probably snuck in because Michael is a boss. Thank you. Thank you, Michael, who is actually the boss. I'm going to just check and make sure that we are good to go. Yeah, it looks like we're there. Perfect. Michael, you're a champion. I know that you hear me. What, what an incredible dude. Good stuff. Thank you so much for doing that. <clears throat> How customizable are your ships? This is a great question. So uh, one of the things about the ships is that we're using a modular based system. I can't show off the actual like way that you're changing all the different parts. But what you'll see here is just like an interchange of these different modules right now and how the ship could look. This is just one class that I'm cycling through. I just cycled through 11 different looks of the ship that just had different wings and different cockpits and different um, bodies and different engines all combined on them to show you different ways that you can create your vessel to your liking. Now, in addition to that, there are other two other classes entirely. So this is just a mere 11 variants of one class, okay? A lot, there's a lot of customization down the line. So good question. Good question. 
Will holler ship in space be affected by anything we can do? Steal the loots, reroute them, etc. Will holler ship? Um, I mean, there's going to be a lot of different opportunities for the class that you choose while you're flying out and about. So my answer is probably. <laughs> uh, there's going to be um, some missions that are far more suitable for a light fighter as opposed to a heavy for sure. And your medium ship classes are going to have a lot of general opportunities for about everything, I think. Um, but even still, your subclass of that specific class you choose is going to have unique properties that other ones in that exact same class won't have. So there's a lot of customization on just choosing your ship. We haven't even gone into your leveling progress and the perks system that you'll have there or the itemization because all of the loot that you find through the Everspace 2 experience is similar akin to Diablo or Destiny where the loot can have random properties and attributes bound to it that are going to customize your playstyle even further. So layers upon layers upon layers of customization here. Lots and lots and lots of stuff. Lots and lots and lots. Can I watch here instead of Twitch? You absolutely can, the Game Knights. I encourage you to do so. My goodness, what a lovely audience. You guys are great. I wish I could be more active on Discord and such, but I do uh, finally have a day off today. Hey, it's good. It's all good. And I just would like to throw it out there. I have been enjoying your guys' company so much on Discord. You guys are hilarious. You guys are fun. Oh my gosh. And just note that, that um, like, a lot of the information that we reveal through Rockfish, like, it kind of goes to Discord first, in a way. Um, so if you're not on Discord, I highly encourage you to do so in order to get all of the news as quickly as possible. Um, I am now in the open world. I'm controlling the spaceship, by the way. I can move left, I can move to the right, I can slow down. I can speed up all of these objects in space. You see that mountain over there? You can climb it. It's kind of one of those things, all right? Um, where if you see this planet, we can actually fly over there. We want to fly over to the sun though, so that's where we're going. Um, we are moving about in this entire area. And uh, a lot of stuff can happen when you're flying about, uh, including be interdicted. You can also um, find random signals and stuff like that. Or you can say, screw this. I don't want to play a waiting simulator, I just want to get to where I'm going so you can lock on and then basically skip all of this fast travel stuff. I almost did that but then I got interdicted which is hilarious, but the point is is that if you don't want to wait around you don't have to. If you enjoy the process of travel through space, absolutely enjoy it. So we are going to go ahead and skip, I just want to get there, boom, we are now there, we're nearby a star that I'm sure we're gonna need to find some more information on. I'm sure of it, in fact. Because there's these scientist dudes right here who are gonna ask us about it. Perfect. More goodness gravy, please? Oh, don't you worry. Stick around for the stream and I'll probably say it at least another 10 times. <laughs> Will any ships have an LX Lux version? You know better seat uh, etc. So you don't get a numb backside after many hours of play. Oh my goodness, Daniel. So the interior space of the ship um, isn't going to be like crazy customizable. I know that the cockpit view itself will be customized. I don't know if we'll be able to change the seat of the ship. That's uh, <laughs> that's a little much. That's a little much. But uh, we might have some extra little features within the cockpit that you can choose from. But we'll reveal that when the time is right. Can you circle strafe though? Absolutely. Goodness. Goodness gravy. <laughs> Will the ancients rift spawn randomly or do they have one location? Couscous asks. This is a great location. Some people might be wondering what the heck an ancient rift is. Well, uh, let's just take a quick time out to address that. Ancient rifts were a stretch goal that we offered in the Kickstarter, which we hit. Huzzah! That's huge because this is a late game incentive to add a lot of replayability and opportunity for you to get sweet, sweet loot. That's right, it's very akin to the Rifts of Diablo. In fact, this is the second time I've mentioned Diablo. We have taken a bit of inspiration, uh, but the Ancient Rifts will provide an opening in space that will uh, 
have a procedurally generated challenge for you to overcome. This could be anything like an Iron Man challenge to a massive boss fight, to waves, to waves, to waves, or like some sort of espionage sort of thing. Lots of different ways that these rifts will open up and provide a challenge for you. And the further that you progress, the better the stuff you're going to find, the better the loot you will receive. And when you are eliminated from the rift, you kind of just get spit back out and you keep everything that you found. So it's only a benefit to you to just keep playing, to get better at the game, to find better stuff over and over and over again. So if this expansive open world wasn't enough for you, now at the Ancient Rifts we're adding randomized great content at the end of the experience to keep you getting new, different, and unique situations to arise, akin to Everspace 1, in fact. So, whew, lots to look forward to with that. All right, a couple more questions and then we'll keep playing. Uh, still new to Everspace, having only learned of it when 2 was teased just before Gamescom. Yeah, yeah, we actually teased it at Gamescom. Yeah, I guess that was right, right before. Yeah, you're right. Flying feels just so good. Hey, it feels so good. It really does. I am really pleased that you are, have dove into Twitch to watch the stream. If you do have any questions, uh, Zoji, I'm going to pronounce your name like that. Uh, by all means, dive in. Ask me. I want to help you guys understand everything about the Everspace formula, why it's created the way that it is, and where we're going. This is, again, this is a community stream. I'm your community ambassador, Eric Schrader. Help me help you. So shoot all those delicious questions towards me, and we will take care of it. Stolen ship parts from Okar, GMB, Colonial, etc. Factions for your own ship to build on. Z Commando, that sounds really detailed and it sounds like a lot of work, but it also seems like it could be a potential possibility. We'll have to see what our development time looks like and if that's something we could add. So your recommendation is noted. Bobblehead! That would be cool. That would be really cool. I think that bobbleheads would be, would be fun. Uh, Again, that's another one of those things where it's like, we'll have to see. So, can't do any guarantees with that as well. Oh my goodness. Woo! Oh, neck cracking time. Everybody's favorite little short segment. Wonderful. Hey, you're here! How's it going, laser head? Good to have you. All right, let's dive into a little bit more gameplay. You guys keep thinking of your questions and shoot them towards me because I will be answering those all this stream. So it'll be good. So this guy, this scientist guy, he was like, hey, there's this star nearby. I'm sure you've heard of it, obviously. And we need to extract some details from it. We think that it's really awesome. And so we're going to pay you for your services of reactivating our solar panels that are in the area. And I'm just like, okay, that sounds pretty dope. That sounds pretty great. So we're gonna do that and then we'll get paid for it, I'm sure. What could possibly go wrong with this? So we're gonna flip these solar panels on. They're gonna face the star. <clears throat> this scientist is just so enthralled by the star. He's just excited. The muted glow is just so exhilarating to him. Ah, it's delightful. We'll activate this other solar panel. Just one more to go. We're kind of ignoring all the, the enemies in the areas for now. Okay, we're not going to ignore these guys because they're a little too close. I see that we have an armor drone giving this Weber way more armor, that orange sliver, than he deserves. So we're going to swap over to our blaster and hopefully get a couple good shots on this armor drone. Now you'll see that the blaster is really good at close range and because we are, we are a little bit further out, it's really hard to hit these shots. Oh, come on! So this kind of shows you a little bit of the variety that you will see in the weapons themselves. Um, so we now have this Weber drone without any armor, really easy to just one shot. This guy's nice and close and personal, so we're just going to use our blaster. Uh, he's got some moves on us, and now he's boosting away. You know what? Screw this. Just take him out with some missiles. Nice and easy. All right, let's go finish up this mission now. But a lot of people have been asking about the weapons that they really loved in Everspace 1. And I can I can say that basically everything in Everspace 1 is going to be making a return in some capacity or form. Uh, maybe even better than what it was before. So definitely be keeping your eyes peeled for that. 
So now we've completed this mission, the scientist says, oh man, this star sucks! It's super lame! So we're not gonna pay you for this because we're not gonna make any profit off of this star. So we'll just pay you what the, the, the price is for like a, a, what's a lab rat, basically. And they're already leaving for another system. Those freaking jerks. I wish that I could go confront these guys, which we'll probably do in a later segment of the game. Boom! But for now, we only get 80 credits. So we'll go ahead and look around this area because I'm sure there's still more things to do. Of course, very vast open areas that we see here. And I see this little crevice that we're gonna go ahead and open up, fly into. And look, we got a little bit of, a little bit of nothing. There's nothing in here? My goodness. A scatter gun, all right. We also have these freight containers which we can lug around if we should desire because we do have this very uh, specific system of grappling things. This freight container is very heavy. You can see that it's hard for me to navigate around while holding it, but it would be possible for us to like take this over to a station, maybe sell it for a profit or something, or screw around with bows by just launching it into them, you know, something like that, or using it as a shield. Maybe we need a more powerful ship or more upgrades in order to have more effect against those kinds of objects. But for now, we're gonna keep floating around this area. I know that we saw a, uh, a particular structure here that was talking about uh, some sort of interaction with it. So let's look at that, uphill slope. You'll also see that there will be maneuvering challenges that test your abilities to control your vessel. And apparently I suck because I missed a ring. This is a very basic format of this. It's gonna look way sexier when it's done, I promise. I promise. <laughs> but um, it could even be something where there's a race that you have to uh, go through against other NPCs. Oh man, I just did so bad there. Dune. Perfect. Maybe some sort of like combat race where you can use certain weapons and whatnot to take out your foes. Maybe even races that are in Atmo, where you're on a planet flying low through a canyon or something. A lot of different opportunities there for us to explore and experiment with. Um, should be should be a lot of fun. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and fly over to the station, and we'll check out some more of your questions. It'll be good. You guys have been a great audience, by the way. So thank you so much for tuning in. It's been my delight to be here with you guys. Will we get cargo drones so I can get my takeaway? Oh, whoops, I missed, uh, I missed the rest of that question. Takeaway delivered where I want it. We will look into a lot of different opportunities to collect all the loot, right? We want to make sure that you get as much as possible. We don't want to shaft you guys at all. So we'll, um, we'll see what we can do. See what we do completely. Already looks sexy. Oh, this is just the beginning, man. Just the beginning. Drinking certain beverages while playing? I mean, it depends on its effects of other op um, other events and other situations for you. <laughs> Superman 64 flashbacks. Oh gosh, I'm not sure if that's a, I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> oh my goodness. You guys are crazy. But yeah, rest assured, we will have a, a lot of visual appealing looks um, as the game gets further in development. A lot of what you see is either a work in progress placeholder or is, um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty straightforward. It's, it's basically a work in progress placeholder. A lot of the stuff you see, um, including the detail on the ships, like we're really happy with where we've gotten, but there will be more tweaking and modifying. It's very possible. Uh, so don't get too comfortable with what you see. Everything could change. It could all go. No, not everything. We're, we're, we're definitely holding true to some of these things. But each of these are fully realized new models that we have created from the ground up for Everspace 2. We didn't just pull them out of Everspace 1 and be like, okay, we're done. No, no, no. This is a new game. We understand that. The only reason there's a 2 after Everspace is because it's a continuation of the game. It's not like we're reusing the assets and changing all the player names for your favorite sports game. No, no, no. It's completely new. Completely new. Oh, did I do shots fired? My bad. Whoops. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> so in this station, we can um, we can buy and sell uh, from the shop in any capacity that we desire. Um, there could be goods that are way better than what we currently have. We're just going to buy and equip this. Boom, done and done. We don't even have to worry about it. And we're going to go ahead and sell some of this junk. There's a lot of different things to talk about with buying and selling. 
Um, I think the fastest way to cover this is that this element isn't done yet. We are looking to have an economy within Everspace 2, whether that's dynamic or static, we're still figuring out. We want to make sure that it offers the best experience for your trading needs and desires as you're playing the game, because certain stations are going to desire certain commodities more than others, of course, and there will be trade lanes that you can interact with uh, in many different formats as well. And uh, we want to make sure that it feels good, it feels right. So, a lot of this, this interaction that you see, a lot of the figures jumping up on the screen, the reason I'm not going into too much detail talking about them is because a lot of this is probably going to change. So, rest assured, we're going to get it where it needs to go, and we'll be working with you guys through our alpha, our beta, and our early access in order to do that. So I'm already looking forward to the feedback. So many people shouting in joyous tones. I'm sure of it. <laughs> and we'll get it to where it needs to go. All right, so now that we've kind of overhauled our ship a little bit, I think it's time to venture out and... Actually, let's go back to our home base and swap our ship. So we're going to do this in the fastest format that is possible. So I'm going to fly back out into super light travel. And we are going to go to our home base just by holding the R to skip. We don't want to wait at all. We just want to get there. Boom, done and done. Fly back to the home base where we will change our ships out. So I always like flying the Interceptor second uh, just because I think it's a visually appealing ship. Um, it's it's a, it's just a strong standard. It's It was like the, the staple ship in Everspace 1. So um, obviously it looks a bit different. It's got its own unique taste now. But we'll, we'll go ahead and take this one for a spin, I think. It handles very similarly to the Sentinel, but it has new devices on board. So now we have a weapon overdrive, we have blinking, and we have an energized boost that we'll be able to navigate the stars with. And we want to head on over to this site, I think. Where there's another space station to trade. It'll be good. What is our plan for the next few weeks now that the Kickstarter has ended? This is a great question. Um, so, it was something I was actually going to save a little bit later on the stream, but ah, whatever. I'll answer it now. Basically, we want to at least do monthly updates to keep you guys in the loop. But beyond that, I'm still going to be streaming every Friday for you. I, I just love streaming. Uh, whether it's on Rockfish's time or my own personal time, dang it, I'm doing it. And nobody can tell me otherwise. Because I have too much fun with these streams. You guys are great. I want to keep you in the loop. We'll keep answering questions. So if you uh, if you want to be a part of that, be sure to uh, follow us along in this process. Whether it's Twitch, YouTube, Mixer, uh, Facebook, you know, wherever it's at. I will be doing these streams every Friday. Now, I say that, and next Friday I'm actually going to be at a convention so i won't be able to stream but rest assured they are planned every friday um and the convention that i will be going to i believe is dreamhack atlanta so if you are going to be at dreamhack atlanta give me a high five if you can reach it ah beautiful all right so now that we're here we want to go to the station first that is where we want to go Nice little trading outpost, pretty large ship. You've probably even seen this area a bit in the uh, trailers and whatnot. I'm pretty happy with the way that it uh, looks overall. So we're gonna head to this trading outpost and we have this manager who needs a cheap mechanic, which, you know, I guess you could say that we are, it'll be good. Can you add it to an alien race is unsure of English and thinks goodness gravy is a, is a greeting? Oh my gosh, Daniel, I love you. Don't change. <laughs> The home, stream, home screen gives you Destiny 2 vibes. We have taken a lot of inspiration from the games that we love. Destiny is absolutely one of them. So, uh, yeah, I'm not surprised. Second is different to the first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, first game was a roguelike. Second game is open world RPG. Thanks for answering that, Geek Bite. You're a rock star. <clears throat> what else we got? Look like a dragonfly from the front for a second. <laughs> yeah, maybe a little. Is there a home base in every solar system? In the current rendition of this prototype, there is one home base, but don't let that fool you because navigating the stars would be very infuriating if you had to go all the way back to your home base. Like say you're over here in uh, Perilous, 
Um, it would be silly to have to fly all the way back to sh change your ship to fly all the way over again to do something. So, much akin to any open world RPG experience or any open world game at all, we will include some format of fast traveling to be able to get you where you're going. A lot of opportunities in that sense. So, don't let only having one home base fool you. And it might be possible to have more. We're not sure yet. It can go anywhere. We've got so much flexibility. But I'm pretty sure it's just going to be one. But I digress. I digress. Lots of opportunities to expand and, and go forth into the stars. So this guy, uh, while I was talking, he was talking to our main character and was like, Hey, I have this fuel leak. Can you fix it? And I'm like, sure. You know what? That's, that's great. So we're just going to go down here. We're going to fix this fuel leak just like so boom and now there's this madcap who's flying about we want to take him out as soon as possible we're gonna use this coil gun which we have on board this interceptor we'll take this homing missile launcher seems nice all right taking him out and now we learn that this base has a madcap problem they've been flying in from all over and they've been stealing the bandwidth at this poor little station that's completely defenseless. Aw, that's so sad. So we're going to eliminate that problem for him by poking about and taking care of the outlaw madcaps. How do you resupply missiles in mine pods? Let me show you. Well, we have to get through the conversation first. I went a little too fast. Again, prototype. There would probably be some sort of modification to what this looks like as you dock here but i digress so uh you would be able to click on this actually here let me just all right we fired a missile off boom now we have this refill option so you would choose what you wanted to refill you just refill all you purchase it just like so this includes if it's completely drained out so it's not like whenever it's completely gone the item itself vanishes it's still here even though it's zero out of 15 then we would go right back to the base hit refill we could fix however many we wanted to refill it with we hit purchase done and done we're ready to go again so you'll have to go to bases stations etc in order to refill them maybe there could be special bonus drops that will add a refill option to your item um, but that's that's how that system works good question how do rare missiles work being consumables so we are still working a lot on that process in the future uh for the future rather so um like for example a lot of people know about the arc 9000 of everspace one a very very powerful basically nuclear weapon that you use that would decimate anyone in your way so the benefit to having something like that is that I mean, it's super powerful, right? But then you have a secondary weapon slot that's full of something that you can no longer use in the space of Everspace 2. Um, so either it would be really expensive to refill. Um, well, maybe not really expensive because we obviously, we don't want it to make it to where it's like you're never going to use it again. We want people to like establish a build around a certain weapon or so. But yeah, I mean, we're looking at different ways to do that within Everspace 2 so that it feels meaningful and validated if you're using very big, hardy weapons um, that do get consumed, like your secondaries, uh, in order to overcome your foes. So, yeah, it's something that we'll continue to tweak as we pass through. Well, the ships have a HAL, like AI, like the ship from Everspace 1. Daniel, this is dangerous lore driven territory so one of the things that i will expand upon is that in everspace one what he's referring to is the hive which is a human interface virtual entity that's what hive stands for and he was your buddy because as a clone spoiler territory i told you guys i told you guys spoiler territory here as a clone Everyone using the Eterna system is established with a hive, respectively. Um, so a clone isn't just out there floating in space without any direction or companionship at all. Those hives serve to give them direction and to help their personalities develop through the course of usually war-driven situations. This is a tactic that the colonials used and employed during the Okar colonial conflict, which you are kind of a remnant of 
Um, I really don't want to crack open the whole lore center um, of this. I feel like I've already given you too much. But basically, after the events of Everspace 1, <clears throat> some stuff goes down. And you're kind of sort of a clone, but not really because you're also finding yourself. And there's some stuff that goes down. And so as of right now in our current vessel, we don't actually have a hive because it's not needed. It's not bound to us anymore. Um, and there's a lot of different directions that that could move forward into the rest of the game. Obviously, we'll share more information about all of the different companions that you'll meet when the time is right, of course. Um, I don't want to break your guys' heart. I know a lot of you guys love the Hive. Um, so we'll see how things develop um, and what we can offer in the future. Don't get too sad. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say to that. <laughs> All right, so we're going to take out these madcaps. And uh, also, I know that there's a lot of questions getting thrown out there. And I know that it seems like I'm like choosing very specific questions. I kind of am. I'm not, I'm not like trying to choose favorites or anything. But I want to tell you straight up, if I've missed your question, I'm not ignoring you. There's just a lot of questions. I'm watching a lot of different streams right now. So please, please, please be persistent. And just ask again whenever I check over and start reading questions. All right? Can you do that for me? Because I want to get to your questions. I know they're important. I want to satisfy y'all out there. It's, it's good stuff. All right, so let's take out these outlaw madcaps. We have this scatter gun, which is a returning uh, weapon in, from Everspace 1. I love the scatter gun. It's basically a shotgun in space. Like, what could go wrong? Oh, it feels good. So we're going to fly over to this outlaw mad cop who's just sitting pretty, stealing bandwidth. And we're going to say, GTFO. Perfect. Let's see if we can one-shot. Oh, yeah. That's why I love the scatter gun right there. Very powerful, very effective at close range. Feels good. Okay, so now this manager is saying that we punched a bunch of new holes in the station. Um... Well, maybe we did, but maybe it was just all this random fire uh, that also came from the madcaps because we fixed this problem for him. So now we're going to fix up the station a little bit more for him. And uh, I think from here we are actually going to demand a certain payment from him, whether he's happy about it or not. That'll be good. After all, we're doing a lot of hard work here. We're repairing this place. We took out his bandwidth problems. Now, come on find an internet provider who goes that distance for you. I dare you. All right. Perfect. Uh, is that all of them? Yeah, perfect. So now he's going to ask how much he owes us and we're going to say an absorbent amount of money. 1.2k credits. He's not going to feel good about it, but he will pay up, which makes me happy. I'm checking over for more questions. Can you have more than one ship and switch around depending on mission, or is it more like your character in ordinary RPGs? You will have more than one ship. In fact, in the current build, we have three ships in your home base that could be completely customized to your liking that you could swap between. So yeah, that will definitely be a thing. Is the game release party in Hamburg? It will be in Hamburg. I sound very American because I am. I am the only American on the Rockfish team, in fact. Um, and I work out of my base of operations in the land of cows and wheat, otherwise known as Kansas. But don't let that fool you. I'm on the development team. I am serving you guys for Rockfish Games in its fullest. We are all part of this together. It's a good time. I've seen rare missiles with attributes drop. Are there any more expensive to restock? There will very likely be uh, balanced price points for the different weapons that will be dropping uh, for repairs and for um, restocking, all that type of stuff. Can you equip two missile launchers? Yeah, I mean, we actually have two different launchers right now. We could actually have three. If you're, if you're asking about like firing two different missiles at the same time, that's not currently a feature. I know it's something that we could look into, um, but it is a little bit of a complicated process. We want to make sure at the end of the day that the game feels fluid and powerful. Um, so if something like that aids in that approach, then 
I think that's something we could do. But if it takes away, if it overcomplicates things with how you're having to manage two different things and like combining them and all that type of stuff, we'll probably just cut it out of the picture. Because again, Everspace franchise as a whole, it's all about fast paced combats, fast paced exploration, keeping the adrenaline up. We don't really want you to have like a space simulation situation here where you have to spend 20 hours before you're really doing the first thing that you want to accomplish. So very much a jump in, go do things sort of situation. A great question though, a really great question. Okay, so now that we've taken care of this base, we are gonna go look at this uh, this warp gate. We're familiar with warp gates from Everspace One. This is what makes us travel around. In fact, when we go to the map screen, we can see this line carries all the way over, keeps going into this other solar system. That is our traversal point. Very, very much akin to the lore of Everspace One. We aren't changing the lore. This is exactly as it is. Anything and everything that happened in Everspace One, uh, everything that was established as canon, it's basically straightforward into Everspace Two. Uh, it's, it's good. So we're gonna go ahead and fly over here. It says unavailable, but I just want to inspect it really quick because I don't know, maybe a big boy's gonna warp through it. And it'll be a fun point of conversation. So this is an outlaw destroyer. This is but one of many, one of many various mini bosses that you could encounter in the game. As you can see here, his sides are actually opening up weak spots that we can pummel him with to do a tremendous amount of damage. But if we don't take him out, he closes up and he gains armor back. So we have to be very careful in our approach to take him down. Um, obviously, the difficulty bar hasn't exactly been fleshed out and solidified pertaining to gameplay balance, so he's a lot easier than what he'll be in the full game. But we can also attack these uh, defense turrets, which actually close up. You can see they're going inside of the ship, where he's going to regenerate those, pop them back out, and keep giving us trouble. So what we're going to do is we're going to just drop his armor here, He's going to open up his sides, and we're going to shoot a scatter gun right in his side. Boom. Done. Taken out. And we'll take all his delicious loot in the process. Cool. Nothing too crazy that we collected, but a good looting is always a fantastic thing. Perfect. So we're going to take a quick pause. Let's answer some more questions. Hello, just joined. What have I missed? The Animaniac. Bro. <laughs> I've just been talking about gameplay elements and answering questions. So feel free to join along for the ride if you have any questions about the experience of Everspace 2. Heck, or Everspace 1. You know, throw them at me. Let's have a conversation. It'll be delightful. We're also showcasing gameplay of Airspace 2, of course. And we'll also be talking about what's been going on at Rockfish for the week, as well as some coming weeks, and share some stuff the community's been up to. It'll be good. It'll be good. So, very, very great. Here I was thinking he speaks great English for a German. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yep, I'm American. That's funny, though. <laughs> Will there be a tr Oh my goodness. You guys. You guys are so silly. Can you reload missiles in space like the ones you're carrying around? So, um, so this one in particular, I could drag and drop this like right now. In the actual game, um, <laughs> I said it awkwardly, okay? This is a prototype. We wanted to keep things a little bit easier to shift around for you. But in the, the actual game, you can't actually move stuff from your cargo onto your ship unless you're at a station. So you couldn't just like load up your cargo with 50,000 ARC 9000s, for example, and then every time you fire one, you just cycle one out. So you just like blast everything to smithereens. You couldn't do that. Um, I already know where you're going with that type of exploitation. And I commend you because that's hilarious and awesome. But no, you will not be able to do that. Otherwise, you will have to be at the mercy of how many slots are available on your ship. And of course, the heavier ships are going to have way more slots. And maybe even can fire many more missiles at the same time, too. Good, good question. Will the demo 
What will the demo include? The tutorial or the 1.6 branch? Too little, too little mail. You asking questions like this in front of people who don't know what you're talking about? The demo will very likely include what you see here with a couple of tweaks and fixes uh, for your guy for you guys. Um, I don't think the tutorial is planned to be in the demo, uh, but I will show the tutorial again for the live stream just in case people have missed it. It'll be good. It'll be fine. Lovely. So, do you read questions from the YouTube chat as well? Yeah, I'm reading. I'm reading all all y'all's comments forever. Sir Four on YouTube asks, "What's partners credits?" Um, I will explain that when we get to that segment here in a little bit, so that you guys are kept in the loop. Uh, but basically, long story short, for that is that uh, even we are an indie team, right? So it's like we have to do basically everything, but we also have uh, a little bit of funding behind us, so we're able to reach out to the partners that we've worked with in the past, give them opportunities to support and develop with us, much like we do with the community at large and how we're going to be utilizing your services through the course of the alpha, the beta, and the early access. So um, we will talk a lot about those partnerships um, in a little bit. It'll be good. Good, good, good. Is this another roguelike? Nope, it is not. This is an open world RPG. Great question, Hooded Cloak. Open world RPG. Much like you can see here, this, these are now uh, permanent locations. Excuse me. These are now permanent locations that you will be able to venture to. All handcrafted, unique locations. There will be about 10 per solar system. So that's about 80 handcrafted, unique locations. That also includes in Atmo, planetary combat and engagement. Uh, including, but not limited to, flying into caves, derelict space stations, um, and various cosmic anomalies as well. Good question. Alright, so let's go track down this broken drone and hopefully get some loot to compare some uh, statistics with. So far, RNG has not been in our favor, uh, but that's okay. We do have a cruise mode to get you around a little bit further in each one of the locations that you venture towards. So now that we're on this broken drone, we're going to try and eliminate him. Hopefully my firing isn't terrible. Goodness gravy. We're going to use this pulse laser because it's a little bit more consistent, even though it's really bad versus armor. You can tell that because here the kinetic damage is 15 damage per second versus the energy, which is 50. 15 versus 50. That kinetic damage is so good against armor and hull, whereas the energy is only applicable to uh, certain types of shields, uh, maybe some other stuff as well. So we're gonna keep picking away at this guy, even though it's not a very effective weapon. It's just more accurate than what we have. Tracking him down. Ooh, there's some loot. Maybe we'll find a better weapon. Hey, that's exactly what we needed. So this auto cannon, this has plus 10% experience per kill. This is just one of many uh, modifiers that can be randomly applied to your weapon, much akin to Diablo or Destiny experience. I'm sure you guys have seen stuff like this occur. So now we have this auto cannon. Uh, this should be able to pummel this guy to the extreme. Oh yeah, look at that. So much more wreckage. And, oh wait, actually, okay, I want to make sure that I don't accidentally kill myself here. What I want to do is I want to throw this big piece of metal at him. Oh, it bounced on everything else. Oh, that's so unfortunate. <laughs> here, let's try, let's try and grab this piece and still do it. Okay, we're gonna take this, we're gonna take this back. Oh man, I gotta be real careful. I could actually destroy myself if I throw this the wrong way. So... <laughs> For science! Alright, no, slow down. Oh, this thing's so heavy! Oh, come on! Oh, I wanna do this for the people! Okay, alright, I think we got... I think we got it in control, so we're gonna... Ah! Yeah! See? Threw that debris right at him and took him out. Isn't that delightful? Oh, goodness. We'll take this new pulse laser in the process. Thank you very much. 
10% of kinetic damage bypasses the shield. Hey, that's actually not so bad since we're doing a lot of damage to the shield in the first place. It's a pretty good combination for a pulse laser. Not to mention it's also just more powerful than the last one we had. So that's also a nice little bonus. All right, let's crack this puppy open. And we've got a bunch of drones hiding away that we're just gonna pot shot to oblivion and feel good about. Nice! Nice and simple. So as you can see, like there's there's gonna be a lot of variety to the items. Like you can see the difference between an uncommon and a superior um, just in and of itself. Uh, lots of different item types. Uh, you, we have this modular based system, not only for your appearance, but also for the ship itself, including but not limited to your energy core, your shield, your plating, your sensors, your thrusters, and your cargo units that can all have various attributes associated with them to better all the other components of your ship. Woo! There's a lot of stuff going on in this game. A lot! Uh, take these TI processors, calibrate coil gun, and a beam laser. Ooh, beam laser! That seems exciting. Hey, it's orange! My favorite color. It's beautiful. Alright, so that's about half of the stream that we've been through. I'm going to go ahead and pause it right here. Um, and I want to jump over and talk a little bit about some of the news that we've had uh, through the course of the week. And as well as just, you know, spend more time answering questions and whatnot. Uh, it'll be good. Will there be... Oh, 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 I see. I saw a good question. Will there be decisions that may affect the outcome, missions, and allegiances in the game, or will it be more like Borderlands in space? I would say it's more like Borderlands in space, but we are using a, um, a, a, a um, factions, a faction system where you will uh, be liked and hunted down by various factions based on your actions. So there is, there are some uh, permanent effects based on your decisions, but it's not like mission-based where it's like. You know, somebody asks for your help and you either say yes or no or go screw yourself. Like you, you, you're just going to like get missions that you want and you're going to go out and do them or not. Um, and you could do specific missions for certain factions uh, to your leisure um, at your command. So stuff like that. So a good question. A good question. Let's see what else I've been missing in the chat. You guys are launching so many good questions. Can we expect sun flares uh, radiation spurts from stars like in the first game? There will absolutely be space hazards in Everspace 2. And I would love to tell, more, tell you guys more about them. But the timing is not right as of right now. So definitely keep your eyes peeled because we'll talk way more about environmental effects and all of that stuff. But yeah. Can we grapple other ships? Might be possible. I mean, you will be able to grapple drones at the very least, and maybe smaller ships? I don't know. Maybe if you're a gunship, you could grapple like a scout, an outlaw scout. That'd be kind of fun. It's possible. It's possible. That hasn't been locked down yet. Uh, for those of you who guys who are still wondering where we're at in development, we have been working on Everspace 2 for a year and a half. We only recently revealed it at this year's Gamescom, which was just a couple of months ago. And we are set to have about two more years of development on this game. But if that seems like a really long time, you're like, holy crap. Well, it's because we're trying to do a lot in this, in this, uh, in this game. I'm sure that you've seen that as you're watching this experience unfold before you, which is why I'm really happy to be answering your questions. We also did complete our Kickstarter recently, and we are going to be moving into alpha, beta, and early access all next year. So get excited. Uh, it's going to be a, a really fun process to see where this thing goes. <clears throat> no shield for more energy. I'm not sure if I understand the question, but I will answer in talking about how this is distinguished from Everspace 1. On the left side, we have a cyan bar and a white bar. You can see that very clearly against the planet background there. That is now your energy for your engines and your weapons, respectively. We separated those out due to popular demand from you guys after your experience with Everspace One. So you'll be able to manage those differently. Otherwise, on the right side, you have your hull, your armor, and your shields, respectively. And also note that the UI can be shifted around and change a little bit more as well, because everything you see is work in progress here. We want to make it as clean and as crisp as possible, of course. Like having accessibility options as Luna, L Luna K, Luna C, uh, Luna C, Luna C. It's probably Luna C. Um, saying over on, on YouTube, might we have the ability to adjust the UI layout and colors, position and color of shields, armor, ship, health? Maybe, maybe, maybe is a really great answer. I know that that's not really what you want to hear, um, 
because it's a non-answer to the question. But those are components that I think that we have the opportunity to look into and progress forward. I know that we are also looking for accessibility options, including uh, colorblind modes and options to increase and decrease the scaled UI so that it's easier for older eyes, um, stuff like that. So good question, good question. <clears throat> is combat getting more intuitive? Yes. 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 Yeah, so in Everspace 1, AI was pretty straightforward. Enemy see you, enemy attack. Enemy miss you, enemy come back. That's basically how it worked. In Everspace 2, because we're using a leveling system, um, the AI can be dependent on that level. So if you see an outlaw scout at level 1 versus an outlaw scout at level 10, they will actually behave differently. How does armor work? Armor will soak damage after your shields go down that will prevent your ship from taking needless internal damage. Um, if your hull starts getting hit, much akin to Everspace 1, you can start taking various component damages that will affect your ship dramatically. Anything and everything from your life support system to your engines or even just your shield can go haywire, but your armor prevents that. It's kind of a second layer uh, after your shield goes down for protection. What are some of the biggest differences in combat compared to the first game? Combat wise, it's pretty similar, I would say, but you're gonna see a much greater range of enemy ships to combat in Everspace 2 as well as some space critters out there that might fight back a little bit. Um, so there's going to be a lot of that where you're going to navigate new AI game space uh, because you're not going to see just your traditional ship see you, ship fly at you routines that you did in Never Space 1. Now you'll see maybe a fighter that hides behind an asteroid or maybe you'll see somebody who has some really advanced maneuvers and lists lazily to the left. Or maybe you'll have an opponent that even can go into cloak and the only way that you can find them is if you have like some type of detection technology or get in really close based on the sensors you have in order to even spot them. Lots of different challenges that will affect you in Everspace 2 that didn't affect you in Everspace 1. Did I see correctly from the trailer that we will be able to enter planets? Um, so, sort of. Um, I'm assuming you mean getting really, really close, like in atmosphere. Yes, you'll be able to go to specific locations that we handcraft in atmosphere of planets. And then on top of that, for certain planets, you'll be able to fly into the crevices of the planet itself, including uh, cave structures, for instance. So you can enter planets in that sense. Very, very much so. Yes. Streaming until when? I got another hour ahead of me. Um, so, yeah. Next uh, snapping stream. Yeah, basically. Oh, don't you just love it though? Okay, so uh, we've been playing for a little bit. I want to dive over and talk a little bit about the news of the week. Rockfish recap, if you will. So what we are going to do is we are going to dive over to our little section where it looks like this. Ah, look at that. Da -da 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 -da. I don't know, some sort of news noise. I need to get one of those. That'd be fancy, wouldn't it? Uh, so we're just going to talk about the Kickstarter a little bit. Um, we did get funded. Look at that. It says funded. There's proof. It's a graphic that says we're funded. I'm not lying. Wonderful. So thank you all so much for your support. It's really appreciated. Sincerely, you guys really are the best. The best community forever. It's it's amazing. Uh, your funding, uh, for those of you who aren't aware of like where we're at with all the funding and all the type of stuff, basically, long story short, is that we were going to create Everspace 2 regardless of if the Kickstarter got funded or not. But because this did get funded, that means we're going to be able to do so much more to the experience. Oh my gosh, we're excited. We're excited to be able to work with you through that process, which would have been a much more difficult process to do had we not received your funding. But now that you've put your money where your mouth is, I mean, your feedback is even more invaluable from that, right? Because I mean, this is this is your puppy as well. Like we are in this together and I'm, I'm excited to work with you all. Seriously, it's gonna be good. So let's talk about update 13, which dropped today. So we had over 50, 50, 500, numbers are hard people, 500,000 euros raised, 
All right, 500,000 euros raised. So thank you so much. Oh my gosh, do you know how many awesome things you're gonna be able to do with that? Oh baby, I am so excited. I am so pumped. It's gonna be good. One of the things we also hit was the stretch goal of the Ancients Rift. We talked about it early in the stream. I'm gonna recap it just very quickly, um, even though it's spoken about in this as well. Basically, it is an in-game content area that gives you procedurally generated environments to fly through with new challenges every time you explore it to get all that sweet, sweet loot. It's very much akin of Everspace 1. It's like a slice of Everspace 1 plugged into Everspace 2 in the end game for you to keep that grind game on, if you will. Ah, oh, it's delightful. All right, so also partner credits. We'll be talking about that in a moment in next steps. So I will fully admit that as I was preparing this stream, this was actually being composed and it was being cycled around the community in the uh, in the team and they were all doing the editing of this and I was busy in a meeting and then I was busy preparing the stream and answering some stuff on Discord. I actually haven't had a chance to read this. So traditionally I don't read this verbatim, but today I'm actually gonna do that because I actually I, I haven't read it yet. So I hope that's cool with you guys. We're gonna dive in. It says, esteemed pilots, what a thrilling end rally. After the initial campaign goal was reached in a brilliant final sprint on the last day of the Kickstarter, the first stretch goal, the Ancient's Rift, was also unlocked only 22 hours later. Dang, you guys are champions. Only minutes before the campaign ended. We're absolutely overwhelmed by the passion and confidence you've shown, and we are all well aware that this is not to be taken for granted nowadays. Especially true because we know, and we've seen it firsthand, that developers can be a little hard to trust. I mean, even the Kickstarter trends, I mean, they've, they've gone down the pits in the last several years because of a lot of stuff going on there. So, like, we know that you really stuck your necks out for us here, and we are incredibly appreciative. And you'll be able to see that very soon as we merge into the full development of Everspace 2. Guarantee it. We love you guys so much. Thank you so much for your support. So we'd like to express our deepest gratitude to all supporters once again. Seriously, we mean it from the bottom of our hearts or the top of our hearts, depending on what you deem is more worthy. We're also so excited because we can now develop Everspace 2 as planned with close connection with our community and as promised, release it first on Steam Early Access in September 2020. We think our friends at Valve will like that too. Perfect. Wanted to just cover this very, very briefly. Anybody out there who was a naysayer saying, oh, they're Unreal Engine, they're gonna be Epic Store exclusivity, they're gonna get bought out from Kickstarter, I just wanna look you in the eyes and say, nope. That's all. All right, next segment. Speaking of which, we wouldn't be here without our partners who are involved in the development process of Everspace 2 and who helped to spread the news about our project on special events and online as well. So today's vlog is mostly about giving credit where credit is due and have our contributors say a few words to you, our super fans, who put their money where their mouth is to make Everspace 2 become true to the way we envision it. All right, so for those of you who haven't seen this video yet, we are going to watch this right now. Uh, here we go, we can just- Space Pilots. Perfect. Water finish. Over 500,000 euro raised from almost 8,000 backers. The Ancient's Rift unlocked and the beard is off. Whew. Who would have thought when things didn't look too good mid-campaign? But you weren't battle weary and together we made it. Thanks so much again for believing in and trusting us. Now our team has been busy working on the game, but before we show you some new stuff, we would like to thank our veteran space pilots. 31 Fox, Corbin78, Geekbyte, Girafasaur, Matsumuri and Shiruzan, who helped out at gaming conventions. They were there for you all day long to answer your questions. True heroes. Now let's have some of our partners say a few words. Hi, this is Joshua Rubin. I'm a writer and narrative design consultant. You might know me from my work on Assassin's Creed 2, Bungie's Destiny, Telltale's Game of Thrones, and Walking Dead. I'm very excited to be helping to shape the adventures of Everspace 2. It's gonna be epic. Hi, I'm Bernie. I'm an Irish author situated right here in Hamburg, Germany. I'm the head writer on Everspace 1 and 2. My name is Guy Guimarães, and I'm part of Volta, a creative studio from Quebec City, Canada. So far, we worked on some redesigns for the ships and weapons. But needless to say, we're looking forward to working much more. Thanks. We are streamlined. We're 
We're a game developer based in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and we've been working with Rockfish on weapons and spaceships from concept to modeling. Hi, I'm Royal Sabrin. I'm Josh Harvey. And I'm Mark von Borstel. We're the art team at Liquid Development, located in Portland, Oregon. We're excited to be working with Rockfish Games to help bring life to the Outlaw Faction in Everspace 2. What's up, Rockfish? It's Toby from the Iron Harvest team. Congratulations on your new Kickstarter success. Seems like you're having a winning streak there. And you are right. I mean, yeah, there's only one thing that is almost as cool as uh, Diesel Fueled Max, and it's, of course, spaceships. And I must say, hey, Everspace 2 looks really, really amazing, and we can't wait to get our hands on it. So may your super space engines never fail. Yo, oh, 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 and sorry, and by the way, if you ever are in need of a, let's say, more traditional diesel fuel power, give us a call, we might do something, okay? See ya. Well, Godspeed to our buddies from King Art Games too. Isn't that amazing how much all these nice folks contributed so far? And there's more to come. Here are a snippet of the assets and features that are currently on the workbench. They range from single weapons over mining gear and freighters to entire combat fleets and space stations in all sizes and for all factions. The production pipeline is being fired up as we speak and will keep us busy for the next two years. Okay, if some of you are wondering if this is still indie, yes it is. Thanks to you guys, we are in 100% control of where all this is going. But since Everspace 2 is a much bigger game than the predecessor, we made sure to bring some additional competent hands on board so we will be able to deliver on our promises as planned, while keeping a close dialogue through the entire production with our incredible community. Now, since we have indeed a lot of work ahead of us, we'll have regular updates on a monthly basis from now on, as these vlogs take quite some time to produce. They do. Thanks for watching, and see you in space. Perfect. So yeah, thank you so much. Really appreciate uh, every, everything that all of you have done. Seriously, it's it's been an incredible experience to be able to work with anyone and everyone, um, all of our partners. Like we've met a lot of people through the years, especially Michael has. He's been doing this for over 25 years now. Goodness gravy, it's insane. Um, and so he knows people, he knows people. And we're able to like really bring that all together to create the best game we can possibly produce. So when I say that like, this is one of the best communities that like to be a part of that we have, like I, I I'm not exaggerating that, guys. Like, we are surrounded by so many incredible, remarkable people. And I know that whenever we're moving into our next steps and moving into the game space along the alpha, beta, and early access marks, you guys are going to hit us hard because I see your passion already. And I know that we're going to bring this to reach the, the greatest fruition possible. Oh, my gosh. It's just going to be it's going to be such a great run. So I'm really looking forward to working with each and every single one of you out there watching the stream right now. All of you backers, all you supporters. Thank you. Ah, oh. oh my goodness. Diesel fueled mechs. Yeah, um, Black Coffee Rider. He's talking about the game Iron Harvest. That was actually the, the big bad boss of Iron Harvest who's showing a lot of love and support for us. Um, it, it's, a, it's a mech styled game. This isn't a promotional stream for them. What are you talking about? But no, seriously, we love them. They're great. Um, they've helped us out, uh, and, and just the support is incredible. So good stuff. Okay. So now let's talk about next steps here. Let's talk about next steps. So we are now in the process of taking care of those cases where payment did not go through yet. So if that is affecting you know that we are on it, we are working to take care of it so that you can get all of your fancy schmancy rewards and are also preparing to set up backer roles on our discord server, which I'm actually in charge of. Yes, as your community ambassador, I can confirm that I haven't quite figured it out yet, but don't you worry, okay? We're going to have a nice, beautiful automated system that's tying you directly from your Kickstarter backer status. We're going to have like a little verification link, essentially, that you're going to choose. It'll identify your email, and then boom, you'll have your backer status on Discord. We're still working out the kinks for it, but rest assured, it will be operable soon-ish. Um, that might be after I get back from the convention next week, but uh, don't you worry. We will have all of that stuff set. We'll have a new Discord uh, area for specifically you guys. It's going to be exclusive. Mm. 
because of your Kickstarter support. And if that's if that feels like it's way too exclusive, and you're like, dang it, I wanted to be a part of that. Where how can I get into that? Well, you missed the Kickstarter, so you, you kind of can't. But you can absolutely join the Discord and have plenty of conversation everywhere else. Maybe next time, or maybe new opportunities will arise as we move into new territory. Maybe. But uh, yeah. So good stuff. All right, the first set of high-res wallpapers also in the works, so we keep your eyes peeled for that. You want to make your desktop look spacey, right? Of course. Now we know that many of you can't wait to get your hands on the Everspace 2 convention demo. The team is feverishly working on fixing a few bugs and making this early prototype build run smoothly on a reasonably broad range of PCs by adding a first set of graphics options and also reducing the GPU load of those fancy new shaders that make space look even prettier than before. <sighs> Due to the recently introduced GDPR, we can't use MailChimp for sending out keys anymore, so we have to come up with our own solution, preferably without getting blocked when sending out some 5,000 emails, of course. If things go as planned, you should have your prototype keys in your inbox around mid-December. So there's your response to anyone and everybody who's been wondering, when do I get the demo? It said that it's on my tier, where the heck is it? Mid-December, we will have a solution. It will be distributed at that point in time. That will be distributed through Steam, to my understanding. So if you have Steam, boom, that's where it's going. It'll be separate from the game space. The demo will be separate from the actual game whenever it starts. So you can keep the demo forever to your liking. It will never change. All right, and then there was the grand finale rerun um, that we both dove into. Um, when I say we, I mean Gary B Geek Bite, who's actually in the stream right now answering your questions and directing you guys, which has been great, as well as myself. Um, the last four hours, it was an absolute pleasure uh, to do. A lot of fun. So that was quite something, wasn't it? Now let's celebrate. We hope many of you will be joining our Kickstarter victory stream because that's how it feels on the Rockfish Games channel, on Twitch, on YouTube, and on Mixer from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. CEST, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. EDT. Hey, that's right now. Boom! Look at that. <clears throat> so, yes, cheers. Wonderful. Fantastic. We are going to, like I said before, we are going to be doing these streams every single Friday, except for next Friday because I'm at a convention. But it, we are going to constantly, I'm going to be constantly giving gameplay um, uh, demonstrations. That's the word I'm looking for, as well as answering your questions. It'll be a good time. So you're never going to miss that opportunity, but also absolutely go join the Discord because we're having tons of fun there all the time. In fact, one of those bits of fun I want to show you right now. Um, so <laughs> okay, so so a little bit, little bit of a little bit of opening behind this. First off, so y'all know what memes are. I know that you do. So we have a video that was created by none other than Bloodstar, a member of our community. Um, and this is very much YouTube poop material, okay? So if this isn't your cup of tea, I implore you to mute yourselves now, uh, or mute myself now, uh, for the next three minutes. Uh, but otherwise, I hope that you sit back and enjoy. I was laughing so hard. I'm actually going to mute my mic because I'm going to be laughing through this, okay? All right, here you go, and you're welcome. Michael, what are you doing in my room? <laughs> Why'd you lock the door? <laughs> Greetings. Oh, sh Greetings, space pilots. We're back with another Kickstarter for Everspace 2. Yes, you heard right. We're back with another Kickstarter for Everspace 2. Yay. Yes, you heard right. We're back with another Kickstarter for Galaxy on Fire 2. Fantastic. Telling from over 30 million comments on social media. Yeah! It is also exactly what you guys want us to make. Now, Inspired by Diablo and similar loot-heavy games, Everspace 2 will feature a deep loot system. Yes, you heard right. We're making a sequel, but not as you might think. This time around, it's not going to be a roguelike, but an open-world roguelike spaceship shooter with deep roguelike exploration, tons of loot, and classic roguelike elements. <laughs> it's not going to be a roguelike. <laughs> Andy, you jerk! We'll continue the hero's journey of Everspace One, a stray clone on the run in the demons. <laughs> you should have done some repairs earlier, but you spend your resources elsewhere. You remember these kinds of shits from a previous. You will be glad to hear that we are keeping the much praised freelance inspired controls. Okay, for everybody who's wondering who's who the fuck are, I didn't say okay. that. Uh, who the heck? Who the heck? 
Who the heck is Deep Silver? That's two less rogues roaming the galaxy. I've definitely earned my money on this one. What a finish. Well, what a finish. Now let's have some of our partners say a few words. Hi, this is Joshua Rubin. Hi, I'm Bernie. Hi, Billy Mays here. Ha. You'll be on the constant hunt for better gear. Be it through exploration, be it through ex exploration, mission, combat, trading, trade, trade. Greetings, space pilots. We're back with another Kickstarter for Everspace 2. Yes, you heard right. Everspace 2. Yes, you heard right. Everspace 2. But not as you might think. Everspace 2. Data stick. Yes, you heard right. Um, what? Floppy disk? Yes, you heard right. Curtains! There are more urgent matters at the moment. How's progress on the Kickstarter? Woo! 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 It's gonna be epic. Beautiful. Beautiful! Oh my goodness. Thank you. Thank you so much for that ridiculous video. Oh my goodness. And also rip headphone users. I probably should have warned you about loud sound. My bad. Wasn't that amazing? <laughs> it's just straight out of our fans. Like you guys. Best community, right? Just best community ever. You guys are are amazing. And Continue to please meme the heck out of everything and anything um, and drop it in our discord We have a fan art channel for a reason get in on that. I'm having an absolute blast with all of this. Oh my gosh So good. So Bloodstar, I know that you're over on Twitch right now. Thank you again for sharing that with me Oh my gosh, like giving my abs the best workout today ever Lord knows I could use it. So thank you for that. Oh, it's solid. Oh, Lunacy is asking for the invite link. Um, so actually, I can actually do this. I can just pop over to the screen. I know it's uh, it's got some music behind it, but in that lower left corner, it's right there. You can go to discord.gg slash rockfishgames. Easy enough to remember, <clears throat> not too complicated, not too complex, so that you can do all the any things that you desire. Um, should, be, should be good time. Should be good times to your liking. Oh my gosh. Michael says, I laughed real hard. <laughs> Michael snuck into the stream. Hey, Michael. Oh my gosh. Goodness gravy. Yeah, I, I had to share that. It was it was vitally important. So seriously, thank you so much, Brutestar. And anybody, like seriously, anyone who does anything pertaining to, to Rockfish, to Everspace, whatever, you want to share it, that's the place to go. We have some artists there. I know somebody drew an Outlaw Scout, which looked really great. Um, any sort of like color corrections, modifications, stuff you want to do in game or otherwise. Maybe you make a ship model out of Legos, you know, whatever. Throw it in there. Oh my gosh. You guys are so much fun. So much fun. <laughs> oh my goodness. Rockfish makes games. Community makes memes. Absolutely. Nailed it. And I know that um, Shuizan, uh, his, his username, otherwise known as Will, Will is has been uh, working on some new emotes for the Discord channel, uh, including but not limited to Michael's face. So you can now utilize that on the Discord with more to come. Like we're still we're still going to be dropping in some stuff, and who knows? Maybe another new emoji could be something that you end up creating that we all just find hilarious or remarkable and we want to stick it in there. Could be an opportunity for you to stick yourself into our community. Get on it. There's so many opportunities. I hope that you're looking towards it. We're just having an absolute blast. It is a good fun time. Ah, oh, great. I want to make sure Facebook's still working. I'm not getting too many chatters from there. Uh, I'm just checking through. It seems to still be live. Hello, Facebook?
<clears throat> Excellent. Sorry to ask again. Oh, no, no, no. No worries about re-asking questions if they didn't get answered. It's great. Um, so, and I also see your question, Hooded Cloak. I will answer that one as well. First, I'm going to answer Dennis's. Uh, so Dennis Cleary, sorry to ask you, is this going to be a physical release for consoles on launch day? I know that we are looking for, um, we're looking to have console release on launch day as well. Uh, pertaining to physical release, oh my goodness, I'm forgetting my notes. Um, actually, give me one second. I, I need to look this up because that's a really good question. I can't remember if we are going to have like very much physical release. I, I think that we are, it's a lot of work. I know that pertaining to Everspace One, it was, it really stretched us out by doing physical release. So it's something that I'm gonna have to check, uh, obviously why I'm doing that right now. I'm curious. I can't. I can't remember if I talked about this from another stream. I legitimately can't remember. Oh my gosh! I'm so sorry. Thank you for your patience, though, and waiting for me to find this answer because this is this is an important question. This is an important question, um, and I want to make sure that it gets answered. I want to say that we are doing um, physical releases. Uh, it's just not going to be like a tremendous number. Um, let me see. Because I know that we have, oh no, we have, okay, so we have a physical game copy that was a Kickstarter tier. It was limited though. Um, it was specifically for either PS4 or Xbox One. And I think, um, let's see. I'm trying to remember, there's something with verification that made it difficult for us to do all the physical uh, physical releases. Either that or it was just a complicated process for us to do in studio. Um, so I'm going to say there's a strong possibility. Um, I do apologize that I can't give you like a straight answer. Um, that's really what I would like to do. Um, but, but I can get further clarification. If you did join the Discord, I can actually respond to you later uh, directly in there. I don't like leaving questions unanswered. Ah, I'm sorry. But the answer does seem to be yes. All right, so I wanted to answer another one of your guys' questions um, that I missed. Okay, so Hooded Cloak asked, have there been any improvements to locating items on your HUD compared to the first game? Many people found it disorienting and confusing. Uh, many people is not accurate based on our records. Um, we did have a, you know, a, a, a small group of people who would have preferred other methods, but I think overall the results gave you the information that you needed in Everspace One in order to figure out where the items were. Um, obviously, the distance was something that wasn't communicated, and if you're talking to that, then yes, I can speak towards having the HUD more optimized for being able to navigate the game space. Um, Obviously, we are using a very similar system of having lots of indicators circled around, um, which you'll see as soon as the game decides to run again. It's been waiting in the background, so it's probably a little hot. Anytime now, game. Come on. I might have to just restart the game. Prototypes, man. One second. But hey, this gives us an opportunity to, to look at the tutorial mission again. What? <clears throat> but yeah, anyway. Um, the main thing is that we are looking at different ways to, um, to give the information that you're looking for in the most transparent format, including options to adjust those further, whether that's scaling up the UI or changing the colors or you know anything like that. We want to make it customizable to a degree. Um, so that is stuff that we are looking into. Good question, good question.
All right, let's see. Black Coffee Rider asks, will I get sued if I extract the original spaceship models and 3D print? Yes, actually, yes, because what you're doing is you're taking, <laughs> you're taking in-game assets, using them for self-purpose. Per, uh, that is actually, uh, that is actually like illegal. <laughs> so just, just pointing it out there. I just, I just wanted to, you know, goodness gravy. Oh, for private use. Hmm. 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 That's sticky territory. I mean, I suppose if you did it and you didn't tell anybody, you could probably get away with it. But if you start selling that, uh, yeah, we'll be gunning for you, man. That would be bad. <laughs> Can you remove your shield generator for more energy, like uh, like in Everspace One? So the shield generator can be removed. However, that's it's no longer a system where actually we're just gonna we're gonna dive into this. I'm gonna talk about this a little bit. So basically, um, this is the tutorial mission, by the way. So if you were to remove your shield, which we can't now in in the standard game here, you can only remove or add a new shield when you're in a base. So you see that little lock. You can't actually change any of the modules of your ship unless you're at a base. So, <clears throat> so like with the shield, um, it doesn't actually use any passive energy now. All it has is a recharge delay and a shutdown duration as well as its capacity. This is completely independently operating. So it has no effect on your energy whatsoever. If you remove your shield, it just means you're not using your shield slot on this particular ship. That's all it means. Good question. Let's see. More questions. Will there ever be meme weapons like a unicorn laser or confetti cannon? I actually thought it would be hilarious to have a flat cannon that fires watermelons. Um, so there's definitely a discussion about it, but we we obviously want to take a pretty a, a, pr a fairly straightforward, serious approach when it comes to what we're developing with Everspace 2. Like we want to make the stuff look good. That doesn't mean we can't get crazy. And I'm sure that some of the suggestions that you guys will have are definitely going to go that route. And, you know, I'm giggling inside, not because I think it's annoying, but I think that it's, you know, it's it's legitimately wonderful. And uh, it could definitely make a really fun experience for the individuals who are looking for that. What we don't want to do is take somebody who's really immersed in the environments of Everspace 2 and pull them out of that because suddenly they're fighting a foe who's shooting kittens out of their cannons, right? So it's a delicate process. We can look into it. Um, we'll have to see if it's applicable or not, right? That's, that's what it kind of leaves us at at the end of the day. So if it works, yeah, great. If you guys want it, we could, we could make it happen. But if it's hurting the experience overall, we're not going to do it. It's just kind of how it works. So a good question though. Good question. Could you provide 3D printing ready models later down the line? This is a question we've been getting a lot. So I will straight up answer this. We would love to do 3D modeling. It is a very, very particular endeavor for a company to go through and to make affordable. So as of right now, there's not currently plans to do that. I'm not saying it's not possible. Um, we would have to continue talking with various partnerships, um, stuff like that to see if it's doable at all. Um, we would much rather put our funding towards the game, into the game, and more content, um, all of that type of stuff, as opposed to spend too much time and too much funding outside of the game space with stuff of that nature. Um, unless you guys are like absolutely vehemently desiring it, um, but that's a conversation we'll have to have down the line. Otherwise, just know that it's not, it's not easy, it's not cheap, and it's not gonna be the most affordable option for you guys if we were to go that route. So just keep that in mind. Just keep that in mind. <clears throat> How many ships do we own at one time? A great question from Letters and Numbers on Twitter, uh, or Twitch, excuse me. Um, that's not currently decided yet in the, in the promo build. We have three ships that you can have at one time. That's probably not gonna be where it ends. 
yeah, I mean, Diablo does have stuff like that in the mix. You're, you're not wrong, Game Knights. You're not wrong at all. Um, but we are not Blizzard Entertainment, and we have a different me, uh, different direction that we want to take our game space. Like, this is not a Diablo 2.0 experience. This is a game that utilizes similar mechanics that Diablo has, which is why we're able to reference it. So, we are dealing with a different game space. Um, and I know that you completely understand, as you mentioned. Um, but yeah, it's just something that we, you know, we have to take very good care, very great care in how we move forward. Because again, we're looking at what's best for Rockfish and what's best for our community. If you guys want it, well, shoot, just ignore everything I'm saying. It's fine. But, um, we want to make sure that it's, it's, it's going to fit, right? Like that's, that's the, that's the main thing. That's how, that's how the development cycle working with the community works. That's, that's just where we go with it. Lava lamps for the cockpit. Oh my goodness. That would be kind of funny and kind of fun. Yeah, cockpit items, that would be that would be really fun to see as well. Um, I do agree. We'll have to see if that's something that we want to spend time and attention on. Because um, there's already, I mean, have you guys seen the customization options already with the itemization, the ship, and the pilot? Oh my gosh. Between those three things, you can basically make just about whatever you want. Goofy guns with the with a like an accessibility menu. That's not a bad idea. A confetti cannon, nano machines and a ball. You guys, look at all you guys. This is great. Do we have medium ships which can carry small ships to send out when being being attacked or attack? Uh, that's an interesting question. So we will have drones that you will be able to utilize in some capacity or another. The degree of the uh, ability of the drones, that is something that we're still exploring. I know that some people wanted to have like this very intricate uh, drone customization system in Everspace One. Uh, whew, that would have been quite the doozy. Is it possible? I suppose it is. Is it something that we're planning on doing? Not at this time. We can definitely look into certain stuff like that and we'll have more information down the line pertaining to your drone buddies and, and all of that stuff as well. I keep saying stuff. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Space dice. Of course, of course. <laughs> Game nights. It's no worries. We all we all desire something even better or something that rekindles the love of something that we had in the past. I totally get you there. I might not, not I might not seem like super old or anything crazy like that but i mean there are definitely things from my childhood that i wish would make a strong return and i mean that's part of the reason a big reason why i'm here working uh working for rockford's games working with rockford's games is because like this is something that i really wanted to see and um i'm really excited to bring it bring it to all of you and work alongside you to make it happen it's great it's great drone ship sounds possible Crazy weapons useful or not could totally work if you use them at some sort of collectible. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I completely agree. Yeah. So I, I want to I wanna make it very clear out there um, that it is possible for us to get crazy with the special effects and, and options for uh, your weapons and your devices and stuff like that for your ships. Um, we just want to make sure that it's going to fit the game space. So that's all. I'm not saying it's not going to happen. I want to be very clear at that. It's also got to be something that the entire team and the entire community is on board if we're going to go in that direction. How long will take next streams? Around two or more hours? Um, how long do the streams take? Is that the question being asked from uh, Razum KB on Twitch? The streams last for about two hours, so we have 20 minutes left, which I'm basically at this point just going to show you guys the tutorial, answer more of your questions, and generally just hang out with you. I hope that's cool with you because, I mean, these are... These streams are for the community. That's what they are for. It's all about you guys. You're the spotlight. I'm just really a face for you guys to talk to directly while stuff happens behind me. Oh my gosh, Jim Law. Goodness gravy. Now you guys are just getting silly. Will the bomber focus more on missiles than primary fire? It is very likely that one of the subclasses of the heavy ships will um, very much focus on primary or secondary weapons more than primary weapons for sure 
All right, let's go ahead and go through this tutorial for those of you who haven't seen it. This is showcasing a bit more of the interior spaces that you'll be able to venture throughout in Everspace 2. Very elaborate, very detailed. Uh, not something where it's like Everspace 1 where it's like, oh, there's a little derelict and you fly through it in half a second. No, no, no. This is a full-blown environment. Oh, you can also hear sound design change. We've already changed some of the sounds, even from a couple weeks time from between the demonstration from the convention um, and versus this is in-game sounds. Uh, this is like the live build that we are currently working on right now. That's what you get to see here. Isn't this great? Joining these streams seem exactly where we're at with development. Okay, I might have lied a little bit because I think the uh, this particular build's like a week old, but I digress. I digress. So you can see here we're flying through this cave space and all these really bright crystals making it easy to see. Those will probably get toned back a bit. But we have these wrecks that we're seeing. We're being told that like, uh, oh, sorry, I should go into the mission here. Basically, we're a wingman. We're protecting a squadron, not really a squadron, a mining group uh, f working for GMB to fly into the interiors of this asteroid and mine it out. And we happen to be a little bit further into outlaw territory than we normally go. But the foreman has led us here and has told us that you can't really get paid well unless you take a couple risks in the process. So here we have our first enemy type in the game that's just teaching you about how to um, target your foes as they're moving around. He doesn't even attack you. Um, obviously before we even got here we were learning about how to navigate our ship so that we could fly through all these nooks and crannies but we're going to take this guy out done and done which is going to open up this main part of the base now we can fly on in whoosh so now we have this it's a, it's a much more expansive area internal right it's not uh it's not something to scoff at like we've got this is a pretty decent sized interior of an asteroid that we've been flying through now boasts like a base structure that you saw before through those shafts and now through this intricate cave network yeah the pumpkin was was only active on the um uh the halloween it was the day before and the day of halloween andy did that thanks andy and marco jerks <laughs> anyway so now we've flown in here and we see that this reactor is not powered up and we need to get some power to it so this is where we learn about the grapple mechanic of everspace 2 where we find these energy cells we grab them like so and we have to take them back in order to power this thing up clunk come on clunk there we go got one in now we got to find this other one which you'd explore around again you're learning how to navigate the game space all this type of stuff find this energy cell Bring them back over here. Um, perfect. Generator is back in line and the path is clear. So Foreman tells the miners, get to work people, we got quotas to fill. So everyone pours in here. They start getting to work on the mining because there's a fancy little uh, thing that you would see here of him chipping into that crystal. He's not gonna just stop there and be boring. Again, this is all work in progress right here that you're seeing and now all these little things are scanning us they're sending out a signal the asteroid's shaking what's going on everything's terrible oh but don't worry we're the wingman right so we're protecting these guys so we're gonna go ahead and take out all of these sensors maybe that'll do something i don't know it's all we can do so we're just getting getting some practice in our shooting while we wait for something to happen i guess so everyone's kind of getting mad at each other. The foreman's like, you gotta go where it pays. And the engineer's like, you sent us on a suicide mission. Oh, I'm mad at everything. <clears throat> Where's the other? Oh, it's down here. Perfect. Got all 14 scanners destroyed. Yay, victory. The Sentinel looks so sexy. I completely agree. It really does. Looks way better than it looked in Everspace 1, that's for sure. A lot of the detail work uh, that you saw, some of our partners actually helped us out with. Um, just bringing everything to light. 
Uh, 3D modeling on the team as well. Matthias and uh, Marco. I think Marco did ship work. Actually, now I'm questioning that. I know Matthias did a lot of the ship 3D modeling. But yeah, a lot of a lot of what you see, it's it's taking the old models, but then reshaping them and, and just like reimagining them into something so much more. So there we have the outlaws uh, chip into the base. They were trying to capture the miners uh, using the Weber drones, and then they sent attack drones to take them out or disable. Uh, specifically me, because I am the escort for this entire mission. And now we're going to hack into this thing. We're going to be able to fly on out and figure out what's going on. <laughs> you keep watching the Frickfish announces Never Space 2 movie. Oh my gosh, it's so good. I really, I really loved it. Makes me laugh every time. Okay, so here, this is where we fly on out after the foreman asks us to. Um, so we are trying to figure out what the heck's going on out here. And this is where we kind of have our opening into the events of Everspace 2. So here we learn that they're slaughtering the escort. We have to try and uh, uh, stay close and, uh, and uh, get to the fog field to avoid detection. But then we see the foreman as well as the other miners make a break for it. They're just running. Even though E9's burning... And he's not going to be able to do much of anything else from here. Um, and we are... We're going to try and protect E9 as long as we possibly can, right? What happens from there? We'll have more to share in the future. We won't leave it bare. Because we care. Ah. Uh, so you'll just have to stick around and find out. Be great. How powerful will circle strafing be? I mean, circle strafing is a very powerful tool in and of itself. Um, especially against AI components who are always leading their targets. So it will continue to be pretty strong, um, but the speed of which your ship will be able to circle strafe will largely depend on the modules that you've applied, uh, the ship choice, um, and also the AI that you'll be confronting. There could be different AIs that decide instead of leading their target, they just shoot exactly where you're at, which could make circle strafing very not effective. So depending on the opponent, and their level, it could prove to be challenging. Gorthek on YouTube says, was my favorite ship in the first game and I am glad that I could fly it again. Oh, pertaining to the Sentinel? Yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm really happy with the work that we've done on the Sentinel. I think it looks great. And the customization options on its, oh my gosh. Yeah, it's good stuff. It's absolutely good stuff. Okay, so we've got about 10 minutes left. Uh, I wanna just use this time to hang out with you guys, just chill, answer some questions. So shoot them at me, let's, 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 let's do this. Let's do this, let's get on this. What do you got for me? Hello Facebook, hello YouTube, hello Twitch, hello Mixer. Now is the question and answering time of the official Rockfish Games stream. For those of you just joining us, my name and your host is Eric Schrader, the community ambassador for Rockfish Games, and it is my pleasure to assist and direct all of your Everspace needs. Solus55, I have an important question. Peanut butter, chunky, or smooth? I'm definitely a smooth type of guy. Every now and then I do like to um, get a little bit frisky, rip off the labels of two different types of peanut butter, mix them around so I don't know which is which. It's kind of like a roguelike formula. Good question. How the difficulty will be handheld, handled in Everspace 2? This is a fantastic question. So Everspace 2 difficulty, you're going to see it in several different capacities. First off, we are trying to figure out if we want to make like a difficulty selection menu. Um, there's a lot of reasons behind why we wouldn't do that. Uh, that could potentially be one of the top level elements. The second is that depending on the location you're at, it could have a level associated with it. So say this particular system is level 20, that particular system's level 10, and you're level 15. So if you want to go pick up some less good loot, but be really strong, you go to level 10. Or if you want to like really challenge yourself, you could go to level 20 system. This is an idea, this is a concept that we have as of right now. I'm not saying it's locked in place, but we are looking into those types of things. We do not, we do not 
want to go the route of doing a um, the illusion of difficulty, otherwise known as scaling difficulty, where whatever level you are is the same level of your opponents, which basically means just more figures and numbers to deal with. We want something a little bit more um, valuable, meaningful than that type of a system. So. Uh, there still will be a little bit of scaling that does go on. Of course, we'll have more information regarding those difficulties later, but that's that's largely how we are approaching that situation. So, good question. I have a question. Is it 2021 yet? No, I believe it is not. Let me check my not watch. It is not. We have two years left. I either have to sue that guy or buy him a pack of beer. My belly hurts because I'm laughing. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> the video you're still watching that video that's great how many devices can a ship equip there are four different devices at this point in time that your ship will be able to equip and customize depending on the ship class or subclass rather that you choose and the level that your pilot is at are we there yet no we are not quite there yet but we're working on it we saw the subclass names for the heavy class today when will the final two light subclasses be revealed assuming the scout is returning in a new form this time around i'm sure we will gladly tease that information uh, as soon as we possibly can um, so yeah just stay tuned stay tuned we're slowly opening the doors to little things here and there we know that you guys have been really excited about the gunship and now you guys know about the bomber and the defender so yeah there's gonna be a lot more to come will stations have enough bandwidth for me to watch 4k movies or am I limited to 1080p I could ask those madcaps but I killed them so I don't know good question <clears throat> today I just found out that you played in the Everspace Everspace One for over 800 hours. It's true, I did. True fan here shows the Everspace Two. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. No, uh, for those of you who don't know, I streamed Everspace One a freaking ton, gave lots of tips and tricks. I even have YouTube videos on it, um, trying to help you guys out in the community as much as possible. It was a game that I had to grow into to love. Um, in fact, I was a Kickstarter backer of Everspace One, little story about me here, and I just, there were some things that I wasn't too happy about and I expressed my opinions and gave a lot of suggestions on the forums, which is how I ended up getting my job at Rockfish Games. And uh, from there, uh, things have been quite gravy. And I've also, I'm also a QA tester, okay? So a lot of those hours that you see that I've been playing in Everspace One, I will not deny that, uh, that there are hundreds of hours of that that were just from quality assurance. So, but yeah, I've, I have completely beaten Everspace One well over, well over like a hundred times, I have, um, <laughs> I have beaten hardcore mode well over tens of times. Um, I've even done the solo run tens of times and the second run on hard mode tens of times. Oh my gosh, some of you are like, what does that even mean? What's just crazy challenge run stuff. In fact, we did a lot of crazy challenge runs just for the community. Those were fun, like ramming speed runs. Um, no shield runs, simple ones like uh, n I had to dump all my equipment every time I jump runs, pacifist runs, just crazy stuff. It's a lot of fun. A lot, a lot of fun. Okay, what is the replayability compared to? Just wondering, as the loot system seems similar to Destiny 2 and a lot of the other looters, but what gives Everspace 2 its claim for replayability? This is a great question, Mad Cuz Dev. We have a 20 to 30 hour campaign that you will be venturing out through the game at full release, of course, as well as the ability to divert away from that path to go exploring at your leisure, take on various jobs and different side missions at your disposal, which should provide well over 100 hours of just going and doing stuff. In addition to that, we hit our stretch goal of the Ancient Rifts, which will allow for you to do completely randomized experiences in a late game situation to search for more loot with unique challenges along the way, much akin to a Diablo Rift situation um, or the um, Destiny 2, what are they called, Strikes? Uh, kind of stuff like that. Don't want to be spoiled too much. Keep some surprises. Oh yeah, absolutely. We, yeah, we, we don't release stuff unless the time is right. There is so much that I haven't told you guys about. Oh my gosh, there's also stuff that I want to tell you guys about. But rest assured, we'll get there. You'll find out. It'll be a good journey together. All right, let's see. How's it going? It's going well. I'm having a blast. How are you, good sir or ma'am? I am just, I'm just delightful. It's, a, it's great to have a job where I get to talk to tons of beautiful, fantastic people on the internet, as well as assist and direct them. It's great. I'm fantastic. Mm. Everspace One stream win. Would you like me to stream some Everspace One? I could do that. 
I could I could stream some Everspace One, give more tips and tricks if you would like. I can actually add more videos on my YouTube channel too. Of course, that's more of a personal sort of territory. It wouldn't be Rockfish Games official at that point, but I would be delighted to do that just for kicks and giggles. Galaxy on Fire 2 stream win. Oh, Bloodstar. Oh, Bloodstar. You're great. Not many people know this, but there is actually a hidden area in Everspace 2 in which if you watch the videos where you encounter Eric, and he gives you a mission to bring him some actual gravy. Goodness gravy! Oh my gosh, Dan. <clears throat> Do you use raspberry when you jam with the dish? Uh, absolutely. Lone Star! I don't know why, I didn't think of this before. Granted, I'm sure if, if there is control support, this should work too. I want to get in a fight, uh, get a flight stick to play this game. Yeah, we do have full HOTAS support. Um, that is definitely a thing. I actually recommend mouse and keyboard. I also recommend utilizing... Oh, I forgot I still had my follower notifications on my personal channel. Just ignore that, everybody. Oh my gosh, that's kind of embarrassing. Sorry about that, boss. My bad. Anyway, um, I do recommend a device called a Move Master. Um, it's still not at my desk. I is, oh my gosh, I am so behind on getting my workspace situated. I know Corbin's watching in some capacity. I'm sorry, man. But yes, a Move Master is a wonderful device that basically converts your keyboard into a very quick, easily respondable device, kind of like a second analog stick, in fact, where it's like you're taking the best of both worlds. You get controller support, having the precision of the mouse and the buttons of the keyboard. It's like a win-win. I love it. It's great. All right. Um, let's see. What else? What other questions we got? <clears throat> uh, well, there are relics that can get like no shields, but you get 75% more ship life. Uh, ship point. Oh, so like trading off no shields versus more whole. Um, so the relics are going to work a bit differently in Everspace 2. A lot more like power-ups, if you will. But granted, there will be trade-offs to certain realms you can go. Um, I know that the gunships, for example, they're going to be much more bulkier than the smaller ships. So uh, it could just be a selection of ships. Um, but there will be more customization in many other realms. I am sure of it. Good stuff. <clears throat> Did you ever do a hardcore run? Um, yes. <laughs> How many is the question? It's easily been over 50. It's easily been over 50. And no, I did not beat all of them. And if it was like, no way. I have... I have completed well over 30, though. Will there be Steam controller support? I think so? I'm pretty sure. Um, I know that it's going to be more generic, like, pertaining to Xbox, PlayStation, but I'm, I'm certain that you'll be able to customize any sort of controller to utilize um, its abilities for the game. Pretty sure. Full controller support for Everspace One. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident that it's there. I, but you know, sometimes I get blindsided. I'm like, I don't remember. <laughs> but yeah, pretty, pretty sure, pretty sure. I could do a coaching session if you guys wanted. If you guys wanted me to do a live stream coaching session for Everspace One, I'd be totally down for that. That sounds like a good time to me. That would be so much fun. Let's see. Um. Yeah, Black Coffee Writer, well, that, that'll be fun. In fact, um, okay, so so I do want to stress, <clears throat> this is a this is a Rockfish Games stream, okay? So I am not trying to promote myself uh, with what I'm doing here. I want to help you guys out um, with uh, Everspace One. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, point you in the direction of a little video that I made two years ago, okay? Um, I'm just going to drop it in... Oh, I can't actually drop it in chat. Dang it! What I can do... Uh, what I can do is I can pull it up on the YouTubes. Here we go. We're going to go back to Rockfish News really quick. <laughs> There's my logo, by the way. Which is an Easter egg in Everspace One. If you ever go into the Scout, the best ship, of course... If you go into the cockpit view and you hold down the alt button, you should look behind yourself. Anyway, um, this is on YouTube, on my YouTube channel. Uh, you can go to Giraffasaur right there. All that logos. All the, this is the logo you want to look for. And the video you want to find is called Everspace 
Hardcore Tips and Tricks Sector 1. This kind of gives you an entry point into Everspace and everything that you need to know right out of the gate. Don't mind the fact that it's hardcore mode. Um, it is a good point of reference for hardcore, but it's also just a general great point of reference for the game space itself. Also note, this is before that I was working full time for, for Rockfish Games, so I did not have a powerful mic. The mic quality kind of is boo, boo negative sauce. So definitely dislike this video. It only has 12 dislikes. That needs to change. I'm hoping to see 40 by the end of the weekend. Whatever. I don't care. Anyway, the point is, is that I want you, I want to serve you guys. If you, if you're needing assistance with, with Everspace One, definitely check out this Everspace Hardcore Tips and Tricks video. <clears throat> Again, you can even just search for Everspace Tips and Tricks Hardcore, and I think it'll be like the first thing that pops up. So... Good, good stuff. So yeah, you just like just to like take a sliver of it, like you'll be you'll have um, little points of references as well, like this, where this pops up, so that you can learn different elements of the game space. Look at that, so that you can learn your natural resource locations and where to find them. That's just kind of like the content that we go through. Um, I even have a really bad pun. Um, it's somewhere in the in the video as well. Um, Oh, that was bad. But like talks about high risk, high rewards, uh, pertaining to it being a roguelike. So much, so much stuff in here. Okay, that's enough about that. Um, but yeah, so so definitely, definitely lots of lots of things to, to learn uh, from that video. Let's see, anyone anyone else have a last minute question? Because we're actually a little over stream. One more question I want to answer. Facebook, YouTube, Twitch. Mixer, one more question. Whoever asks it first, I'm answering it. Hope it's a good one. Don't make other people upset if you ask a dumb question. Okay, I guess that's all. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave you guys with the promo page right here so that you can see the Discord link on screen right now so you can dive in, get involved with our community, say hello to me, I'm known as Drapsor Online, otherwise my real name, Eric Schrader, the community ambassador for Rockfish Games, who lives and serves you. You guys are so important in my life, I'm not even joking when I say that, it's actually true. Um, so give me a shout, I'll give you a shout, it'll be fun. Thank you so much for being a part of these streams, hanging out with me, having a good time. Seriously, you guys are amazing. I love you. I love you dearly. I truly do. You guys are incredible. Um, so, yeah, you, you guys have been awesome. I have been Eric Schrader, Community Ambassador for Rockfish Games. Don't stop being awesome. I will catch you in the next stream. Not sure when that's going to be as of right now. Probably two weeks from now on a Friday. So, definitely stick around. Otherwise, let's chat it up in Discord uh, in a little bit. I actually have to go transition and help out my wife with my children. But uh, I'll be on Discord a little bit later today, I'm sure of it. So uh, that's all I got. Cool. Toodles! <laughs>